哀れだとよくばニャニャ言い方が悪かったなら謝ろうだがそなたを気の毒に思っているのは本当だ Raven of the Inner Palace a reaction What's up guys and thank you for coming back to watch our channel Today we are going to have a look at one of the anime series that features historical fantasy is packed with secrets and has a supernatural element entitled Raven of the Inner Palace Raven of the Inner Palace or also known in Japanese as Hepburn Kyu no Karasu is the title of a series of light novels written in Japanese by Kyo Shirakawa and drawn by Ayuko Since April 2018 and continuing through April 2022 Shueisha has released seven volumes of the Shueisha Orange Bunko series under its imprint. In October of 2022, the first episode of an anime television series adaptation produced by Bandai Namco Pictures was shown, and the events of the series take place in a made up version of ancient China. The general premise is that in a China esque kingdom, there's one consort called the Raven Consort who lives in her own palace and is never subjected to the sexual attentions of the emperor. Instead, It is her duty to fulfill requests, although she may request payment for her services. The Raven Consort's name is Liu Shoshui. She has the ability to use mysterious arts and will accept any favor asked of her, whether it is to find something lost or to curse someone to death. Before we go any further, we want to hear your opinions on this series. Do you think it's worthwhile to watch? Leave your comments down below. Now, For the first episode, premieres that are the first half of a two parter are always a bit tough to cover. Although it is true that certain introductions are significant enough that they require more than one episode to make their case, this does not change the fact that the first episode typically consisted of a great deal of build up with very little to no payoff. This is most certainly the case in this instance. As the entirety of its running time is spent teasing out a variety of concepts and essential aspects of the characters, but the episode ends before any of them can be handled in further detail. To be fair, however, what we are given here is undeniably engaging, and it is that quality that will bring us back for another episode. We were initially concerned that we would get lost in the flurry of court politics. However, Everything here is pretty clear cut. From our new emperor, who has just reclaimed his throne from a usurping step parent, to the mysterious Raven consort, who serves as our real protagonist. We are glad that we did not have to worry about getting lost. Everything is described in such a way that it flows organically. So there is never any confusion, even if there are a lot of mysteries and secrets that are just waiting to be uncovered. The image that is created. Is one of power imbalances, personal revenge, and lingering feuds that have been smoldering for generations. All of these aspects are given just enough depth to pique your interest in learning more about it all. In a similar vein, the supernatural aspects of the story aren't overly explained. Rather, they are characterized by how the characters react to their existence in the story. Even our primary protagonist, Shosui, managed to catch me off guard. I had the impression from all the promotional material that she would be a model of stoicism and secrets. But after seeing her for the first time, it is quite evident that these characteristics are merely protective affectations. Because of the treacherous power structure that exists within the Imperial Palace, it is imperative that she remains the appearance of being impassive and ethereal at all times. This is especially important when she is interacting with a new emperor who has recently usurped the throne through underhanded means. Outside of her duty as the Raven Consort, she possesses the same level of determination and self assurance, but she also possesses the typical clumsiness of a teenager, which lends her a sense of humanity. There is still a lot we don't know about her, which is especially frustrating given the way the story ended. But just like with the larger supernatural and natural mysteries, the information that we do get is enough to make me want to learn more. We also quite enjoyed the adversarial banter that she had with Gaojin throughout her encounters. They would prod at each other with just enough venom to show that they meant it, but not enough to actually sting. All things considered, this is a strong introduction nonetheless. It is not comprehensive. And it provides a great many reasons to return. 
If you are in the mood for a more tranquil kind of fantasy that nevertheless has stakes, if you are just a sucker for court politics with a touch of mysticism, then this is an easy selection for you. Before we continue, make sure to get notified whenever we add new anime videos to YouTube by clicking the bell in your notification settings. You can select individual videos to receive alerts for, or select them all at once. Make sure you have notifications turned on in your phone settings if you're using it right now. Let's cut to the chase. All right. The Raven of the Inner Palace has the aura of being one of those shows that makes you want to watch each episode more than once. And not simply to take in the stunning visuals that are evoked when Shisui utilizes her hair ornaments as a magical implement. And if you do like it, you're in luck since we see it a lot, so you'll have plenty of opportunities to enjoy it. This is a story with multiple tiers, and delving deeper into it might require attentive observation. Our video for the day comes to an end with that. I am grateful that you all have been watching. If you found the video entertaining, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. In the event that you found those videos entertaining, you might also be interested in the following selections of our other videos.